Okay, on this example, we're given that tangent of alpha is eight over 15 and that our angle alpha lies in the third quadrant. So our goal on this is to find the half angle for sine, cosine, and tangent based on this information. So when I get going on this, let's take a look at our formulas. Each one of these requires cosine of alpha to fill in to be able to uh, find these half angles. So what I want to do is, there are different ways to do this, but what I always like to do is just draw a right triangle. We're given a trigonometric ratio, so I always find it very, very handy to just draw yourself a nice right triangle, label alpha in this uh, corner, and I know from SOHCAHTOA that tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So I can kind of label my sides. I got 8 on the opposite side, 15 on the adjacent side, and our goal here is, remember, finding cosine of alpha so that we can fill into each one of these formulas. So to get cosine of alpha, again, based, based on SOHCAHTOA, we're gonna need the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So right now we don't have the hypotenuse. Let's do a little bit of work to find, I'll label it as C for the time being, let's find that hypotenuse. So as we get going on this, I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. I can say, well, eight squared, A squared plus B squared, 15 squared is gonna equal C squared. And we have an equation, has a couple constants, need to solve this for C. So I'm gonna go ahead and say eight squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. And then 64 plus 225 is 289. We're gonna apply a square root to both sides to isolate C on one side all by itself. And this one works out pretty nicely that C is gonna be 17. Okay, so cosine of alpha is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can go ahead and say 15 over 17. Now, I wasn't very careful about the sign out in front here. So let's take just a second and think about that. So we know that alpha, our angle, is in the third quadrant. Hopefully, we have some sort of um, phrase that's going to help us. I always use all students take calculus as far as determining the sign, should it be positive or negative? So in our case, alpha was in the third quadrant. In the first quadrant, everything's positive, only sine in the second, tangent in the third, and then cosine in the fourth. So we're in the third quadrant with our alpha. We know that cosine in the third quadrant should be negative. So at this point, I need to make sure that I include a negative for this ratio. All right, let's next go ahead and see if we can fill this in to our sine of alpha over two. So in this case, we're looking at um, the square root, and I'll explain about that positive and negative out in front in just a second, but I'm going to fill in one minus, and then cosine of alpha, we can replace with negative 15 over 17, all over two. Now let's talk about this sign out in front. Should it be positive or negative? Well, what we're given about our alpha is that it lies in the third quadrant. So if it lies in the third quadrant, that means that alpha fits between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. But we're looking at alpha over two. All right, so we can start with this inequality that alpha has to be in the third quadrant, so between 180 and 270, and then we'll divide each piece of this inequality by two. So 180 divided by two makes 90 degrees. We'll leave it as alpha over two in the middle, and then 270 divided by two makes 135 degrees. So if alpha over two fits between 90 degrees and 135 degrees, that means that alpha over two is gonna be in the second quadrant. So we're looking at quadrant two for this half angle. So again, back to all students take calculus, if we're in quadrant number two, that means that sine is gonna be positive in the second quadrant, while each of these others is gonna be negative. So we're gonna go positive for sine of alpha over two. The rest of this is mostly just algebra and simplifying down. So we have the square root, and we can say, well, that's one plus 15 over 17, all over two. And then to further reduce this, we probably don't wanna have fractions inside of fractions. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both numerator and denominator underneath this radical, both by 17. 
This should eliminate that little fraction being the 17 here. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is distribute the 17 to each term in the numerator and multiply it by two in the denominator. So it's all still underneath this big square root, but we're gonna get 17 plus 15 all over 34. So 17 times one for the 17, 17 times this fraction, the 17s make a one or they cancel out. If you wanna think about it that way, you're gonna be left with the 15 and then 17 times two for the 34 in the denominator. Okay, from here, we see 17 plus 15 makes 32. We still have a 34 in the denominator. That'll reduce down slightly to get us to 16 17s underneath the square root. I'm gonna leave it like that instead of worrying about uh, getting rid of the radical from my denominator. Get the idea of what's going on here. All right, next let's look at cosine of alpha over two. So pretty similar as far as our work goes. We're gonna go ahead and say one plus, and then we're gonna replace in for cosine of alpha, negative 15 over 17, all over two. This is the place where I like to be careful about alpha over two. That's in the second quadrant, same idea as what we just did up here. So only sine was positive in the second quadrant. That means we need to have a negative out in front of this radical. So it's overall a negative. Okay, as far as our simplifying down goes, I'm gonna bring along that negative. So I have the square root of one minus 15 over 17, all over two. Pretty similar work as far as I'm gonna multiply numerator and denominator both by 17. Still underneath that square root though. So distribute. And then two times 17 makes 34 underneath there. The last of our reducing down, we can say 17 minus two, or sorry, 17 minus 15 makes two over 34, still underneath our radical. So we have negative square root of 1 17th with a little bit, bit of reducing down. These are both multiples of two. All right, one last one, we have tangent of alpha over two. So to get tangent of alpha over two, again, it's mostly just a fill-in sort of pr process. Tangent is going to be negative in the second quadrant. So we go negative square root of one minus negative 15 over 17 over one plus negative 15 over 17. Just reusing that um, cosine of alpha that we uh, found from our triangle up above. Okay, I will go ahead and rewrite this. The double negative is going to make a positive. So I can say one plus 15 over 17 all over one minus 15 over 17, just cleaning up the uh, parentheses here, getting rid of those two negatives are gonna make this positive, a positive and a negative, make this a negative. Okay, uh, lastly, I'm gonna multiply numerator and denominator again by 17, working on clearing out little fractions within big fractions. So we have negative square root, and then a little distributing, we'll get 17 plus 15, over 17 minus 15, which will be 17 plus 15 makes 34, 32. Over 17 minus 15 is gonna be two, which works out negative square root of 16, which would be negative four. Most reduced down we can get to, obviously. So I hope this helps out as you're working on these half angle formulas. I think where students struggle the most on these is just understanding, should this be positive or negative out in front? Uh, that tends to be a big challenge, but I like drawing the triangles as we get going on these. Just draw a right triangle, use what you've done hundreds of times in the past with Sokotoa and the Pythagorean theorem to help you uh, to go ahead and find that missing side length on our triangle. All right, hope this helps. Good luck as you're working on these.